everyone. Welcome to Baker and Book Reviews. I'm Sarah. And I'm Becky. And today we're talking about The Oracle Code by Marika Nijkamp. 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 I should know how to say it because I introduced her when she came to do the visit. I actually got to spend the day with her and she was so cool. We did it. We were at... Um, so she seems like such a kick-ass person. She was... So she <laughs> like was the a, thing that I loved was she came and did a talk at the high, sc the high school in my district and she wanted to see the high school because she had never seen an American high school before. So me and um, the, the the librarian at the high school and the person from our administration like walked around this high school and she was like, she's like can I see the gym? Can I? See? And she was like taking pictures and she was like, she's like, it's kind of how I pictured it, but it's so different. So it was it was just she was very very cool, very gracious. Like the kids came up, the kids loved her, and when the kids would come up and talk to her, she was so like welcoming and so because sometimes these authors are not great with kids, and she was just awesome. So like I said, I. She seems like she'd be fun to play D and D with. Or she would just be. <laughs> like, she would just, just be fun with. to hang out with. Yeah, like, I don't know. That just she just seems to be that way. Right, and she she kept she says sometimes she says things that you know like like just like pops into her head and it's like hilarious and just she was she was she was very cool. So if you ever get the chance to meet Marika, do it. It's true. All right, so this book we got off NetGalley. Did you get your NetGalley? Net yes. So we got it off NetGalley, and it is set in the Batman universe. And it is about Barbara Gordon, who is this big time um, hacker. I mean, right? It's hacker. She's not like a. She's developer. a hacker. Yeah, she's a hacker. Um, and then one night something goes wrong, and she gets shot and is paralyzed as a result. And so now she's going to this Arkham Rehabilitation Center. I feel like the people of Gotham City should learn that you never go anywhere that has the word Arkham in the title. Bad things happen at anything Arkham labeled. I mean. I, I guess I, my understanding is that everything in Gotham is just bad. Like there's like, if you see a daisy in in Gotham, you just like crush it under <laughs> your foot because it's bad. Um. Anyway, so she's at this rehab facility with other kids her age who are um, also kind of rehabbing with their own injuries. You know, some maybe using crutches, or some may have lost an arm, some may also be in a wheelchair like she is, and they're kind of learning kind of how to navigate life now that they've got these um, differing abilities um, and while she's there she kind of discovers she meets a friend who um, likes to go walking at night <laughs> and she meets this yeah, friend and this this friend starts telling her these creep I think they're creepy stories she doesn't seem to think they're creepy but I think they're kind of creepy I mean there's dolls involved like in nursery rhymes anyway the girl that walks around at night um, insists that her brother has disappeared. Even though I guess I just assumed that her brother was invisible. <laughs> so, oh, she's got an invisible brother. You always assume they don't exist. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, anyway, then when they both start asking questions, she disappears. So now Babs, I I don't know how I feel about that nickname, but, but I think but I guess it's like her nickname, but still. But I think that Babs was her nickname, like when the character was introduced. I think Barbara Gordon has always been Babs. I don't. I don't. So that's like, like I'm not a fan. So of that's that like nickname. 65 years. So 65 years ago, that's Fine. what you said, Babs. Um, Fine. Um, anyway, so she's on to the mystery to figure out kind of where her friend went, um, where her brother went, and kind of piecing together the clues because that's really what she does is she solves mysteries. Yeah. Um. So. I liked this. I liked this. I liked the art. I know that you kind of had problems with it, but I liked it. So I didn't have problems with the art. What I thought was, actually, I thought the art was kind of interesting was because, to me, a lot of it really looked like the classic comic strip art. And not, like, even, the, like, the classic comic books, but, like, the what were in the newspapers in the 50s and 60s. And, like, to me, that was cool. Like, and I, and I actually, I clipped a couple that maybe we'll put up that I was like, this really, to me, looks like when you're looking at the panel in the newspaper, this is what it looks like. See, and it felt very, like, Svetlana Chemkova and almost Raina Telgemeier kind of, like, towards that right route. Because things, the drawings were rounded, I felt. And um, you could see a lot more of the, it was, like, kind of what I consider to be the American graphic novel, which looks slightly like um, manga, but not really. And, like, the French graphic novels that I read, their their um, drawings are sharper. Yeah, I don't know, and maybe I'm just making stuff up. And if I am, I was gonna say I guess it depends me, on who you're looking at. Because I feel like Hergé's stuff isn't that. Sharp. That does not matter. 
Okay. <laughs> um, but yes. Actually, you're right. Because Hergé, I think, could, could be very similar to this. Yeah. Like, but okay, I, so I've never read Tintin. Like, I've never actually read it. But I've seen the cover a whole bunch. Based on the cover. <laughs> Just terrible. What's wrong? Oh no, I know. I I read them, but that I I feel like I feel like there's like a whole tirade. I read read it. it. No, no, I like I like Hergé. Um, I feel like I should read it now. Oh, we'll talk talk about it. No. um, Anyway, um, so we were just talking about the art. I like the um, I like the colors in here because there are a lot of times when I don't like the coloring, but the colors in this work really well. And they were darker, which again to me gives it that older feel. Right. Well, and it's Batman. Right. Expect dark, but I liked how. Kind of when the accident happened, there was, and I will put a picture up, but there were, it like turns orange and black, and like it kind of looks shattered, and then throughout, like when she gets to big clue pieces and big kind of quintessential parts of the story, you see like the puzzle pieces in orange and stuff, and I really liked that. I don't even know if I noticed that. Yeah, I like that. I did notice that there weren't chapters. I know that that really bugged me because I because I was reading it like on break and stuff, and I'm like, okay, get to the chapter, get to the chapter, get to, and then get to the chapter. Um, I liked the story. I liked I liked the fact that she was smart. I liked the fact that she wasn't going to sit there and be saved. I like the fact that you're presenting a superhero who's in a wheelchair, um, which I know the Oracle the, that's that's the the legacy, but that is what it is. I mean, they're saying this is the origin story, but I feel like it's like. The first fourth of the origin story. Like, I feel like there's... Yeah, we're be- not there yet. Like, she definitely kind of takes her power. Like, right. like power of, like, herself, not, like, superpower. She takes her power and, like, shows that she can still stand up for herself, even though, you know, maybe she doesn't move the way she used to. Right. Um, which I, I definitely appreciate. And it proved that, like, you don't have to fit this cookie-cutter mold of a superhero to kind of save yourself and to save those around you, which I liked. Um, I don't really have anything else to say to you. I feel like I was going to go somewhere else with that, but I... Oh, I liked the fact... um, I liked kind of when she was talking about the fact that um, her friends always leave her, and that's why she doesn't want to make new friends, because, like, I thought that was really kind of interesting because, um, you know, she loses touch with her best friend because he was there when the accident happened, and... It really kind of threw him through a loop, and she's like, I can't be friends with these people because they're just going to go away. And I kind of liked that grappling with it, and the way that it was grappled with, I enjoyed. Um, it was really well done, and I actually, I think I would read more in this series. So that might not say too much about people who do enjoy these comics, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm not a comic book reader, and for me to want to kind of continue with the story... I think it may work and it may not work for those who are traditional comic readers. I think fans of Rick and Nige Camp, though, will enjoy it. It's a good way into the world. Yeah, it is. We should rate it. Oh. Our rating scale goes from five unicorns down to two unicorns. If we don't like it, it doesn't get a horn in. It's therefore a horse. Where are you? I get a three. I enjoyed it. I liked it. Like, I was going to say a three at the beginning of this, but like I'm really at a four. I really liked the art. I liked the story. I would continue on. I, I liked this. I'm giving it a four. So give it a four. So So that is where we are on the Oracle Code. All right. See you around. Bye.